it feels like your car is going to break apart. So today I have with me a rather interesting car. It is a sedan but it is lifted like an SUV. The tail end of it is a fastback design but the boot doesn't open like a hatch. I even purposely picked out a funky shirt that I have just to try to one-up this car. It is the Citroen EC4X. Well, let's have a closer look at it. If you are thinking of trading in your car for something like this EC4X, why not try selling with Quotes instead? Quotes helps you sell your car quickly and easily. With the new Quotes doorstep, get a professional inspection by our certified mechanics at your convenience anywhere on the island. Quotes will then auction out your car online to its wide network of dealers to bid on your car. Once the bidding is complete, Quotes will update you with their best offer price at no obligation. It's that easy. Find out more, visit quotes.com.sg. That is Q-U-O-T-Z.com.sg. Now let's get back to the review. So now let's start from the front of the car. As you can see, being a Citroen that is known for kind of quirky designs, the front end of this car looks kind of unique with its split headlight design. But of course, if you are actually familiar with Citroen cars, you would find this front end very familiar because it looks, from what I remember, is exactly the same as the EC4, which was an SUV shape. So one little detail that I really appreciate about what Citroen has done is how they actually integrated their logo to the front end. I would, wouldn't really call it a grill because there isn't any intake of sort, but yeah, as you can see, the logo is integrated into this front chrome piece over here. I think that's a very cute little touch. Now let's take a look at the side of the car. So now we are at the side of the car. Let's start off with the wheels. So this 18-inch wheels right here, they have a twisted 5-spoke design to it and it looks to be very aero-optimized. I think this might actually have a part to play in improving the range of the car. So in case you haven't noticed, the EC4X is a full electric vehicle and it is denoted by this cute little E logo right here on the door. So as you can see on the side of this, there is no flat metal panel for you. Everything is all nicely and distinctly controlled, leading to this smooth flowy shape. And of course, you will have noticed all these black panels over here. This is a bit SUV-like and in my opinion, I think it is quite the current trend. So now the most important part of the EC4X design has to be its fastback design right over here. Look at the slick curves of it. Now let's check out the rear of the car. So as you can see, at the back of the car, the soupy fastback design leads to this nifty little duct here. I actually think this is a nice little touch. Of course, we cannot not talk about the tail lights. So the sculpted rear end of the car leads to this tail light that ends in the shape of an arrow or at least that's what the brochure says. Does it look like one? Maybe. Now let's open up the boot. So as you can see, there isn't any electric tailgate on the car. This is all still manual. But what we have is 510 litres of boot space which is substantial. So as, can, as you can see, there's totally no problem clearing the luggage and the anti-trolley test in this car. So the seats can also be knocked down in 60-40. So if you want to fetch large objects, it isn't an issue. Only it was a hatch design, you can probably just throw an entire bicycle at the back of it and it will fit all right. Now let's check out the inside of the car. The Citroen EC4X is priced at $167,999. The electric motor produces 134 brake horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque. The single-speed transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 10 seconds. The 54 kWh battery has a drive range of 436 km. For more details on the Citroen EC4X or any other car, head onto sgcarmart.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. So now I'm in the rear seats of the Citroen EC4X. I'm only 1.7 meter tall and you can see that <laughs> the headroom is a little bit limited over here. Well, I guess you have to pay a price for that soupy fastback design some way. So if you are very, very tall, I think sitting back here might be slightly uncomfortable. Now for legroom wise, it isn't particularly magnificent or anything. But well, I guess this is still comfortable enough even for decent to long drives. Right, so when it comes to amenities wise, this car is quite bare bones. But well, it has what you need. There are aircon vents for each passenger at the rear which is adjustable and of course there are USB ports. Well, it might kind of look like both ports look the same but actually one of it is a Type-A USB and the other is actually a Type-C USB charger. So, well, it's actually quite modern keeping up with times, I guess. <laughs> 
So I've actually just noticed something really interesting. This is probably the first car that I've been in that doesn't have a centre armrest in the rear seats. It al it's almost like they want you to sit in the middle. Well, let's give it a try. <laughs> well, as you can see, the car isn't that wide, so I wouldn't really fit three full-grown adults in the back seat for a really, really long time. And there is a significant transmission tunnel over here, which is kind of odd considering this is a full electric vehicle. And, well, I thought flat fo floors are kind of a standard these days. So I guess it's actually best to just limit yourself to two adults at the rear seats because anything more than that, I don't think it will be very comfortable. Now, let's check out the front seats. So actually, the first thing that I noticed when I got into the driver's seat is that, wow, these seats are actually all manual controlled. These days, I've gotten so used to cars with electric seats that this is just a little bit odd for me. So as you can see, the steering is actually quite unique. It isn't totally round. It has the top and the bottom squared off, probably for easier entrance and exit of the car. Other than that, there isn't any issues with operating it. It's all, well, it still works as a normal steering wheel. Another little quirk that I noticed is these knobs over here. So this actually controls your music you know, skipping to the next track or back to the previous track. So usually you'll be used to it being left and right, but this is actually up and down. So, well, it took me a little while to figure out that that actually is the music control. That's kind of quirky. Oh, there's one more cool nifty little trick that this car has. So it actually has a head up display that can be manually operated. You can actually press a button and it comes on. And if you think that you don't really want to have the head-up display blocking your view, you can just close it. So just press the button and it retracts. Isn't that quite cool? The instrument cluster is fully digital, but the screen is rather small. But that is actually pretty much to be expected with cars in this range. So cars like your BUID Dolphin, you know, they, they all also have such a small screen, which actually is alright. It's sufficient to display what you need to see, which is mainly the speed. Well, the speed. You don't even have the tachometer on electric cars anymore because, yeah, no engine. <laughs> and beside the instrument cluster, there are this nice ambient lighting over here. I don't think I've ever seen this on other cars. It's a cool little touch, I guess. At 10 inches, the infotainment touchscreen isn't the largest I've seen in all cars. I mean, these days there are so many big, huge screens like in those BYD and in the Tesla. But the interface is, well, it's easy to use. It's quite simple. And the most important part of all, it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is super important to me because I can just link up my phone easily and I can use Google Maps, I can listen to my music through Spotify. Well, that's all you need for an infotainment these days, in my opinion. So now for the rest of the center console, as you can see, there are actually still physical aircon knobs over here. This is something that is appreciated by people who drive or rather all drivers because while on the move, it is very difficult to operate the climate control from the touch screen and you've got to, you know, divert your attention away so you can just reach for these aircon knobs. Well, that's a cool touch. Even though it's a modern car, I think this is something that should remain in most, if not all cars. Now moving on, there is a wireless charging pad right here. So you connect your phone to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, leave your phone there, it stays charged. Perfect. And there are USB ports over here, like at the rear, there are also a USB-A and a USB-C port. So, well, you don't need to worry about not having the correct cable. Now, this cubby hole right here, I find this rather interesting. So, in first glance, it's just, well, just a space. But actually, if you lift this up, wow, there's actually a secret compartment over here. Well, do with this information as you may. I don't know what you want to keep over there. So you can adjust the drive modes with this toggle over here. It's a nice and simple design. Once again, the shifter, as you can see, it's another simple design. No rocket science over here. Well, I did say that Citroen is a quirky brand. Now, just look at this. So this is your normal glove compartment, nothing out of the ordinary. But over here, you press this. Wow, this is actually a tray. So what is a tray good for? Well, if I'm the passenger, I will probably just dump my phone in there. It's well within easy reach. And I'll just, you know, I can just open it when I want to use it. And then there's another interesting bit. Over here, there is another compartment. I couldn't make sense of what it was for at first, but I've been told that you can actually have a tablet attachment accessory over here so that you can hold your tablet while you're on the go. So imagine as a passenger, you want to go on a long drive to KL with your family or something. Well, in the passenger seat, you can just keep your tablet over there 
enjoy Netflix, watch your movies on the go. That's really cool. Well, now that we have seen how the interior of the car looks like, let's go out for a spin and see how this car drives on the road. So I'm out here now driving the Citroen EC4X. You have seen how the car actually looks very similar to the previous EC4, especially the front end. And the main difference for the EC4X is its sedan looking body style, which is different from the EC4's SUV body style. But is the exterior just the only difference? Well, not really. There's another big major difference for this car. So the EC4X comes with a revised powertrain. It has a slightly larger battery at 54 kilowatt hour. That is 4 kilowatt hour more than the EC4. The EC4 actually has a drive range of around 360 over kilometers. That is not too bad, but not great either. So the EC4X with its revised powertrain, it actually has a range of 436 kilometers. And it also has a bit more power. It has 134 brake horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque. So the acceleration from 0 to 100 is a little bit quicker as well. This does it in just 10 seconds. Not extremely fast, but well, quite perky. And it's, being an EV is actually enough for your normal daily drive. Being a Citroen, there is something else going for it, which is the comfort. Everybody knows that Citroen is a brand that focuses on comfort since all along. They used to have this interesting hydro pneumatic suspension system where the suspension actually self-levels itself and all that. So, well, that was, at least from what I saw online, that was a very, very comfortable car. While this car, it doesn't have the complicated hydro pneumatic suspension system that you find in some of the older Citroen cars. It has something that's a little bit simpler, but it still works very well from what I can feel. It is what Citroen calls the progressive hydraulic cushion. So for the more technical guys, you can think of it as basically the bump stop in the suspension. You know, those rubber stops at the extreme end of the compression of the suspension. Well, normally with these rubber stops, you get that jarring effect when you hit a really big hump. It feels like your car is going to break apart. So instead of those rubber bump stoppers, what this car has, they have hydraulic bump stoppers. So it's like another layer that is somewhat like the actual shock absorber system itself using you know oil and stuff hydraulic to compensate for that bump so the result is actually a much smoother ride especially when you're driving on broken roads so Citroen call it the flying carpet experience if I didn't get it wrong and well I can say that it definitely does the job because I'm driving along on the highway these expansion joints and whatnot you you don't feel that jarring effect or anything it's just a smooth going ride and that's definitely something that this car does really really well it's that comfortable ride so still on the topic of comfort <laughs> yes i know there's a lot of things about comfort about this car that is that's basically what citroen is all about they are probably the only company that i have noticed that actually put so much effort into ensuring comfort that they actually say that they designed these seats specially. These are called the advanced comfort seats. So from my understanding, they actually make the seat wider. Um, I'm pretty big size and it feels comfortable. I don't feel like I'm getting kiap by the seat. So this is actually quite comfortable. You know that comfort isn't just about having a smooth ride. That's just one small part. Okay, one big part of the equation actually. But there are other things. So we talk about noise, vibration and harshness. So. That includes, of course, the insulation of the car. Well, the insulation of this car is actually pretty, pretty good. But what's really impressive to me is how well it actually manages the road noise. So in a lot of modern cars, you don't really get a lot of wind noise or, you know, external noises from outside, save for some really loud bikes blasting past or anything. So this car does that well as well. But I'm really quite amazed with how it manages tire noise because even driving at expressway speeds and stuff, the tire noise is really not that loud, it's not very intrusive. That's something that I noticed. So for normal driving, the light steering and the soft suspension makes things comfortable and, well, it's very effortless. But I probably wouldn't want to drive this car aggressively or super hard in corners and all that because, well, all these things that makes the car easy and effortless to drive don't really feel that great when you are pushing the car hard, you see. So the theme for this car is all about just a chill, relaxing drive. And 
the features in it actually adds on to it. So it actually have adaptive cruise control which I have been using throughout the entire time I'm talking about the car. It's probably the reason why I can collect my thoughts properly because I don't have to worry about you know suddenly braking or anything if the car slows down in front of me the, the adaptive cruise control actually does it for me there's lane keep assist as well but this is lane keep assist it isn't lane centering so I cannot just let go of my steering wheel, the steering wheel like some other cars that I drive I mean you're yeah, not really supposed to do that but yeah for this car I actually still have to do most of the steering work myself so there's also blind spot alert as well so there is actually quite a fair bit of safety and driver assist features in these cars. So actually, for the price that you'll pay for this car, you actually get quite a fair bit of things. And well, I still have to circle back to the topic of comfort. This car is really just so chill, relaxing and comfortable to drive in. If I'm not talking to you right now, I would be enjoying my music and cruising, you know, just enjoying the moment. That's how comfortable this car is. So the Citroen EC4X, is it a will buy, won't buy or go try? Well, I'll say it's a will buy and I'm talking about this from the perspective of someone that knows what they want and it is a comfortable ride. So you're someone that actually enjoys Citroen's funky design and all and you know you want a car that is comfortable for entire family to sit in, go on beat for road trips or just going to the supermarket you want it to be comfortable and enjoyable and from what I've experienced with this car it is what you are going to get so yeah I will buy it if that is what I want well that is my review of the Citroen EC4X what do you think of the funky design that Citroen has done for this car well let us know in the comments don't forget to like share and subscribe to our YouTube channel click on the notification bell so you won't miss anything from us and follow us on TikTok at SG Karma. That's all for today. Bye. So let's start from the front of the car. As you can see, no. See that these seats are actually still. Actually, actually, how many actually I want? Yeah. Affect the operation of it. So, ah. Uh,